he whirled himself in the water like a wheel, stretched out his neck towards them, and uttered a cry so strange that it frightened himself. Wow, Heidi. I know. Could he ever forget those beautiful, happy birds? And when at last they were out of his sight, he dived under the water and rose again, almost beside himself with excitement. Yay! He knew not the names of those birds, nor where they had flown, but he felt towards them as he had never felt for any other bird in the world. He was not envious of these beautiful creatures, but wished to be as lovely as they. Poor, ugly creature. How gladly he would have lived even with the ducks, had they only given him encouragement. The winter grew colder and colder, and he was obliged to swim about on the water to keep it from freezing. Oh, no! Yeah. But... Every night, the space on which he swam became smaller and smaller. At length, it froze so hard that the ice in the water crackled as he moved, and the duckling had to paddle his legs as well as he could to keep the space from closing up. <sighs> he became exhausted at last and lay still and helpless, frozen fast in the ice. Oh, God, Heidi, did he really get stuck in the ice? Yes, he did, Melisande. But let's hope it doesn't last too long, okay? Right? Okay. Well, there's news in sight. Good news, because early in the morning, a peasant who was passing by, saw what had happened, and he broke the ice in pieces with his wooden shoe and carried the duckling home to his wife. The warmth revived the poor little creature, but when the children wanted to play with him, the duckling thought they would do him some harm, so he started up in terror, flooded into the milk pan, and splashed the milk about the room. Then the woman clapped her hands, which frightened him still more, and he flew first into the butter cask, then into the meal tub, and out again. Oh, no! What a sight! What a condition he was in! The woman screamed, ah! and struck at him with her tongs. The children laughed and screamed, <laughs> and tumbled over each other in their efforts to catch him. But luckily, he escaped. Yay! Thank God, Melisande. Well, the door stood open. The poor creature could just manage to slip out among the bushes and lie down quite exhausted in the newly fallen snow. Yay! Whoa, that was close. I know, it really was. Let's see what happens next, okay? Okay. It would be very sad were I to relate all the misery and privations which the poor little duckling endured during the hard winter. But when it passed, he found himself lying one morning in a moor amongst the rushes. He felt the warm sun shining and heard the lark singing and saw that all around was beautiful spring. Yay! Then the young bird felt that his wings were strong as he flapped them up against his sides and rose high into the air. They bore him onwards until he found himself in a large garden before he knew how or where or when it had all happened. The apple trees were in full blossom and the fragrant Long elders bent down to the stream, which wound round a smooth lawn. Everything looked beautiful in the freshness of early spring. Well, from a thicket close by came three beautiful white swans, rustling their feathers and swimming lightly over the smooth water. The duckling remembered the lovely birds and felt more strangely unhappy than ever. Well, I will try to fly to those royal birds, he exclaimed, and they will kill me because I am so ugly and dare to approach them. 
But it does not matter, because to be killed by them, then pecked by the ducks, beaten by the hens, pushed about by the maiden who feeds the poultry, or starved with hunger in the winter. But Heidi, I don't want him to die. Oh my God, Millicent, nor do I. He's a very brave duck. Yes. Well, then he flew to the water and swam towards the beautiful swans. The moment they aspired the stranger, they rushed to meet him with outstretched wings. Kill me, said the poor bird, and he bent his head down to the surface of the water and awaited death. But what did he see in the clear stream below? <gasps> his own image, no longer a dark gray bird, ugly and disagreeable to look at, but a graceful and beautiful swan to be born in a duck's nest in a farmyard is of no consequence to a bird if it is hatched from a swan's egg. <laughs> Yay! He now felt glad at having suffered sorrow and trouble because it enabled him to enjoy so much better all the pleasure and happiness around him. For the great swan swam around the newcomer and stroked his neck with their beaks as a welcome. Into the garden presently came some little children and threw bread and cake into the water. See, cried the youngest, there is a new young, young one. And the rest were delighted and ran to their father and mother, dancing and clapping their hands and shouting joyously, there is another swan come, a new one has arrived. Then they threw more bread and cake into the water and said, the new one is the most beautiful of all. He is so young and pretty. And the old swans bowed their heads before him. Then he felt quite ashamed and hid his head under his wing, for he did not know what to do. He was so happy and yet not at all proud. He had been persecuted and despised for his ugliness. And now he heard them say he was the most beautiful of all the birds. Even the elder tree bent down its boughs into the water before him and the sun shone warm and bright. Then he rustled his feathers, curved his slender neck and cried joyfully from the depths of his heart. I never dreamed of such happiness as this while I was an ugly duckling. The end. Yay! Okay, everybody. It's nappy time. <laughs>